On a recent trip to the Coastal Plains Research Station in the Northern Territory, the banana industry's next-gen growers were able to see for themselves the performance of varieties currently being trialled for resistance to Panama disease tropical race 4. Currently, there is no Cavendish variety available that is both resistant to the disease and commercially viable. With the disease now present within Australia's largest production region of far north Queensland, there is now a renewed focus in continuing to search to find resistant varieties. When I heard of the opportunity to come up here, I wanted to come along and have a look at the TR4 trial that's happening. Um, so I had never seen pictures of it before and I just wanted to see the growing conditions and the different varieties that were going on um, and just to see what varieties are and, and are not tolerant to TR4. Screening of 27 banana varieties is currently underway, nine of which are Cavendish lines, while other types include non-Cavendish varieties such as fear lines, as well as hybrid and parent varieties. Four varieties, with a known response to Panama, are used as controls in the trial to compare and rate the disease response of the new varieties being tested. Researchers artificially inoculated the site at planting. Once plants started to show external symptoms, monthly ratings have been taken, recording agronomic characteristics such as bunch emergence, bunch weight and plant height. Now 15 months after planting, growers are able to witness firsthand how the varieties have performed. So first impressions, uh, I was surprised to see some plants, a lot of plants still there, especially at the end of the first year, is I suppose testament to the fact that we're on the way to getting a variety that's, that's tolerant and even resistant. Variation in the Cavendish varieties um, and I was very impressed with CJ19 and how it responded. And for Masana, I think they're two options that could be explored more. Yeah, look, there was a lot of variance in the Cavendish lines. It was interesting to see the GCTCV lines, uh, the 215s and 218s. A lot of those were still there, and some of the other lines, like the Dwarf Nathans and other lines, that some were still there and some weren't. Heartbreaking to see the wounds brought is such a productive plant and such a beautiful plant to grow and just heartbreaking to see that they are not going to stand up to TR4. They may stand up for 12 months but over a couple of returns they're all going to be dead. When we saw the FIA lines, uh, the one that really stands out is FIA 2 and that was a quite a good looking plant. It had a, a nice bunch, um, nice length fruit. The FIA varieties, they looked some of them looked good, they looked promising, but from what I understand, because they're not Cavendish lines, from a consumer acceptance point of view, they may not be a, an answer to the problem, but again, they, some of them were, were performing fairly well. Although the trial work is in its very early stages, results so far from plant and first return are showing promise, with some varieties showing resistance to disease infection. These varieties will be the subject of continued trial work along with new Cavendish selections from Taiwan and hybrid lines from the French Agricultural Research Organisation, CIRAD. The take home message for me is we just got to keep at it. We got to stay in the industry, support the industry and give it the time to progress into something that we can do in the future, yeah. So number one take home message I guess for us and for everybody that's been here is we need to buy more time and by doing that we need to slow the spread. Nature finds a way and unfortunately everywhere else that this has been in the world it has spread. We won't perform a miracle by stopping the spread I don't think. It's a matter of how long it will take to spread. Everybody being vigilant with their biosecurity practices will buy the industry more time to come up with the resistant variety.